Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I make kombucha. Uh, kombucha is a fermented tea drink. Most of you may know about kombucha already. Probably many of you already make it. And there are many ways of doing it, but this is how I do it. I'm going to try to just hold the camera here so that you can see the various pieces. Here I have a bowl of my my uh, mother culture in it and about a cup of the liquid. You always want to save a cup from your previous batch and put it with your culture. Here I have the jar. This happens to be an old sun tea jar. It's one without the spigot on it. It's better to have just pure glass. So this one has no spigot on it. And what I'm going to do is first just put this culture into the bottom of this jar and then I will pour I will pour the uh, liquid that I told you that I saved right in on top of that. Now earlier to this morning today and sometimes I even do it the night before I made up a quart of very strong black tea and it has one cup of sugar in it. This is a gallon jar and this has one cup of sugar in it. I don't often use sugar but I do for this and I'm just going to go in there with a clean hand take out those tea bags and squeeze them a little squeeze them gently so they don't break and I have tea leaves all over and then I will pour this liquid into my gallon jug. I will then add tepid water. You don't want it too hot because it will kill the culture if it's really too, too hot. And of course, the colder it is, the longer it takes to make. Um, that's why you also want your kombucha itself in a normal room temperature spot, maybe even a little bit warmer, but not in direct sunlight. All right, then I'm going to pour water into this jug with the tea and the kombucha start in it. I'm going to pour the water in right up to the neck of the jar, where the jar begins to um, to become a uh, lesser diameter in order to create the neck of the jar. This jar doesn't really have a neck, but it's it does narrow so that the lid will go on. I'm then going to stir this mixture just to get the water and that original tea that I put in all stirred together. Now at this point, I will cover it. I use a coffee filter. There's enough air that gets through it to provide air for your culture. And I'm just going to put a rubber band. I'm going to set this down for a moment. Just a minute here while I put this rubber band around it. Whoops. Okay, one more time. Give me one more time. I'm going to just put a rubber band like that, right around the top of it, so it has a little, a little bonnet on it. I'm then going to date it with a post-it note. Today is, okay, Sunday. May 1. And I will put this on the jar itself, Sunday, May 1, and set it aside back here in the corner of my cupboard. There's another one that has many cultures in. Part of those I'm going to give away, so I've been saving some cultures to give to some friends. But I'll let this sit here for 7 to 10 days. That's how long it takes to ferment. Now, when we hear ferment, we usually think of alcohol. This is only very, very slightly alcoholic. I think it's 0.05% uh, alcohol. 
And that is about as much alcohol as you would get in a glass of apple juice if you uh, left it to sit on your counter uh, at room temperature for a day. So it's very, very mild. There's, it, you, you don't even notice it and it doesn't affect the system. It's very good for you. It's even being studied in Germany uh, for anti-cancer properties. Um, and it's an ancient, ancient drink. It's been around for centuries. It goes by many different names in different cultures. Uh, in here, we usually call it kombucha. It's also called magu. It's, um, I have a, a friend from Ukraine who saw me make it and offered her some one time. And, and she says, oh, savas, that's what we call savas. And it's always been sold. This was before the, the uh, collapse of, of the communist empire. Um, it's always been sold on the streets in little clay cups like we would buy um, Coca-Cola or, or um, Pepsi or any soda drink here. So it's, it's a very ancient drink. It's very healthful. It's very refreshing. To me, it tastes a little bit like a very gentle apple cider. Very, very nice, very refreshing because after it's completed, um, I will pour that off, refrigerate the bulk of that, and begin the same process uh, again for the next batch. I love it. I've had this same culture going since 1992. That is a long time. I've kept it alive all that time. It's a wonderful culture. And once you get your first start, um, they're like, uh, like little pets to you. You don't want to stop producing these cultures. And of course, you can share them, give them out, and then your friends have a wonderful drink on the way as well. So, so much for today. That's how I make kombucha. See you tomorrow.